Hey guys, welcome back to the TTA Performance YouTube channel. Um, got, some, got an exciting one for you today. Um, it's an engine that we're building for a customer. It's a 301 turbo, of course, uh, 30 over, forged pistons. Um, I'm gonna spin the camera around here in a second and show you it, but uh, what's really special about this one is we're gonna be trying out some aftermarket aluminum cylinder heads. So let me spin the camera around, let's take a look at this engine. Right, so what we have here is a 1980-301 turbo block. It's been bored 30 thousandths bigger, so now it's a 306 cubic inch. Uh, it has a forged flat top piston, what I, which I can show you right here. Um, it does have two valve reliefs in it. Um, and for the most part, basically a, a standard upgrade rebuild that we would normally do. One of the things that we do is we actually notch out the cylinder walls on the exhaust valve side. Clean that off. Um, because the combustion chamber of a Pontiac head, or especially the 301 head for sure, um, it, it kind of overlaps into the deck surface of the block. So we kind of unshroud the combustion chamber of the exhaust side. Uh, on, the, on the block itself and let me let me get a gasket here and I'll show you what I'm talking about All right, now that you can hear me better because the heater shut off because it is brutally cold out here today um, This is a 301 head gasket. This is the and as you can see The the combustion ring the firing ring on the gasket itself is not perfectly round It's actually got a I call it an egg shape to it yeah, and getting in closer we notch the cylinder wall to clearance that and open that up otherwise the head itself is going and following this ring but the deck surface of the block would be straight and it would partially cover that little corner so this kind of helps the exhaust get around the exhaust valve and expose the combustion chamber there but this is a 301 head gasket of course um, and we're actually going to be using these Kaufman Racing D-Port aluminum uh, cylinder heads. And I'm going to take this one off and show it to you on the bench here in a second. We we custom ordered these from Jeff Kaufman. Uh, we kind of spec'd them out to what we wanted. And there's really neat features about it. But it's just a standard port. You know, obviously this is the 400 style port, uh, intake port. This is not a 301 intake port. And so we're going to be making some kind of intake manifold for it but let me get these off we're going to flip them over and i'm going to show you the combustion chambers and everything and what uh what's kind of unique about these heads uh, that we ordered for it okay so we have the head off and we're looking at the bottom side of it so what we did um, was that looking at kaufman racing at their cylinder heads that they offer they have three different well they can make any kind of combustion chamber cc that you want because normally they would uh, CNC the combustion chamber and and increase its size depending on bore and stroke of the engine that you're putting it on. So they have the smallest CC combustion chamber that they offer is their as cast uh, combustion chamber, which is what we have here. As you can see, this is just rough casting. Nothing's been machined uh, or milled. Now. Normally that would be 65 cc, which is actually pretty nice because it's a little bit smaller than what has been advertised for a 301 um, combustion chamber. Usually 301 combustion chamber has been shown in literature to be around 72 cc to give it an 8 to 1 compression ratio with a flat top piston. Uh, that's in a non-turbo application. The turbo applications, they dish the piston and put it down to about seven and a half to one. Since we're dealing with an aluminum cylinder head, usually you can go higher in the compression ratio because the aluminum can dissipate the heat much better and more efficiently. So talking with Jeff at Kaufman, um, he, he said that he could even shave the cylinder head down, tighten up that combustion chamber even more. I was trying to get as much compression as I could out of it. Compression's really kind of based on, it's kind of based on bore size and the stroke. 301s are just a three inch stroke. We have a four inch bore, in this case a 4030 bore. Um, we'll try to, you know, without using a domed piston or anything, 
one that would be raised up and into the combustion chamber. We're trying to get as much compression as possible. So he shaved the head and that made the combustion chamber smaller. And one of the things that we had them do was we had them soften the chamber. If you look, you can see all the, it looks like a record. We have these little grooves going around. And what that is, is that the quench area, basically the flat part of the combustion chamber, when the piston would come up and the flat part of the combustion or the flat part of the cylinder head would come up, sorry, when the flat part of the piston would come up to this quench pad, that's the one area where detonation can occur. If detonation is going to occur, it's going to occur on the quench pad where it's parallel to the piston. And what some boosted guys will do is will they'll soften the chamber and actually take these quench pads and put a slight angle on them towards the valves and basically kind of eliminate the quench without dropping the compression too much. And that's why the head was actually shaved is because we were going to soften the chamber and actually kind of take out this quench pad and angle it. And let me get a straight edge here and I'll show you. So looking at it from the side here with my straight edge, hopefully this stays in focus. Here we are, we're on, we're on the flat surface of the gasket, and you can see that that is angled and tapered. Let me get it right in the middle. It's angled and tapered towards the combustion chamber, towards the valves. So anything in this, sometimes you'll hear people say the squish area. You can see that that combustion or that compression is going to want to kind of ramp towards the valves. And what that allows you to do is have a much wider tuning window of ignition timing and stuff and trying to suppress that detonation and trying to keep it from, from showing up too early. Um, you could actually have a wider window of ignition timing, possibly even run more ignition timing without getting into detonation. So that was one of the, the major things that we had done was we softened the chamber by kind of angling and tapering this quench pad towards the valves. We're at as cast with the combustion chamber. We shave the head, we try to get as much uh, CC as we can. I probably should measure the CC of these just to be, just to see what it is. Uh, I haven't done that yet. Uh, the other, the last thing that we did was valve size. We actually took the valve size down. Um, he did offer a 202 or 2.02 .02 inch intake valve. I believe the exhaust is 16 something, might be 166, I gotta look again. I'm just going off the top of my head. <laughs> but uh, instead of a 211 intake valve, which is typical on Pontiacs, you know, high performance or, or some of the bigger cubic inch Pontiacs, we went down to a 2.02 inch intake valve. And what that allowed us to do was, he said with the, with the ASCAS 65cc chamber and a 211 intake valve, it gets real shrouded down here. He said if you use a smaller valve, it'll actually unshroud itself. And that's what we did here. So we have a smaller intake valve. We have the softened chamber. You know, the, the quench pad is actually angled. We actually shave the cylinder head down uh, to try to keep that compression as high as we can with a t as tight of a combustion chamber as we can. And we're going to be putting it on this 301. So with that, let's move on to the gasket. So in a previous video, I had done a comparison between conventional Pontiac cast iron cylinder heads, uh, a pair of number 17 350 heads that I had, and comparing it to the 301 cylinder head and kind of showing the differences in combustion, or not so much combustion chamber, sorry. D the main differences being where the gasket sealed and also the coolant passages and how they were different. Um, and then mentioning about the head gasket itself, we had talked about with the 400 head gasket, how things had gotten close to uh, the coolant window here because of the large oil drain back um, teardrop that was in a 400 style head gasket. And, you know, you can always go, I'll put a link in the description for that video if you want to go back and look at it or if you haven't seen it yet. So one of the things that somebody had asked was, Hey, you know, you talk about trying to use the 400 head gasket when trying to put a 400 style D port head on it, and you're trying to line up uh, round coolant passages with windowed coolant passages on the block. And you also in that video, I had talked about the the scallops that were on the exhaust side um, of the cast iron cylinder head. 
and uh, how I had, I had a different Kaufman head there at the time and said, well, aluminum heads go right to the edge. And someone had asked, well, if the why don't you try using a 301 head gasket with either an aluminum head or a conventional style uh, Pontiac head? Well, here's the reason why. If we flip this gasket around and put this on the Kaufman head, and we'll line up the bolt holes here as best I can, right? The biggest problem is that the gasket, the fire ring, <laughs> the, the hole for the fire ring for the cylinder is not big enough to cover, I'm trying to hold this, to cover the combustion chamber, to get outside of it. It's actually to the inside of it. And <clears throat> that is kind of, an, kind of a problem. I don't know if you can see it in there, but it's overhanging into the combustion chamber. Now, this one's not as bad, but it's there, and it is kind of an issue. It is an issue. Um, these being smaller combustion chambers, it's probably a little bit better. If you were to do this, I happen to have the 350 head over here. If we tried to do this on the 350 head, it's even a bigger problem because it does interfere uh, with the combustion chamber, the fire ring. I can't even hold this on here, but there is a big, big gap in there. You can see that it's, I don't know if you can see that or not, but it, it's down. It's this, the cylinder firing ring is too small for the combustion chamber of this 350 number 17 head. So this fire ring would never seal here. Um, it would be to the that fire ring would actually be to the inside of the combustion chamber um, It's pretty close on this aluminum head and I get like I said, I'm pretty sure it's because of the The small I'm gonna throw a couple bolts in here. Hold on Okay, I threw a couple head bolts to hold the gasket and try to align it the best I can but Yeah, the fire ring is actually going over the combustion chamber for the 301 head gasket um it is close. I mean, it would almost work, but any slight movement, if the gasket kind of shifts, it's really, really close and overhanging. So what we did is we came up with our, with our own head gasket. Let me grab it. So this is our prototype head gasket that I'm trying to hold on here, but you can see that there is no... This one is definitely to the outside of the combustion chamber. And that's what we're hoping for. Now this doesn't have the egg shape to it because um, it, couldn't, it couldn't be made that way. Uh, the manufacturer of this gasket didn't have that option of doing a, a non-perfectly round shape. Um, so this is a rubber coated graphite uh, head gasket, very similar to stock. Um, this is also what we're using on, we have a 301 version of this, so we'll go over um, that this is this is the head gasket that we're going to use. This is a gasket that we designed in CAD and had it manufactured, and it's combining everything needed to make the coolant passages line up between the 400 style head and the windowed passages in the block. And one of the things that we have to do that we're going to do is that we're actually going to drill into the deck of the block um, a hole in the front. A hole in the back and then what I call the 421 hole because 421 Pontiacs apparently used this like kind of coolant patches steam hole whatever you want to call it um, uh, on, on those engines and that's what we're gonna do we're gonna put three holes in the block when this gasket is on the cylinder head we're gonna add that 421 hole to the cylinder head also to match in the block but other than that it's just it should just bolt right on then so that'll allow us to have the correct coolant flow through the cylinder head from the block i apologize for the heat being on like i said it is brutally cold out today um and that'll take care of this now what other mods are we going to be doing to this engine um let me get this head set back on and we'll go over that so we get the the head uh set back on there i'm going to throw a bolt in here real quick just to make sure that it doesn't fall off <clears throat> and one of the other things we'll be doing is we're going to be running a roller camshaft. We already got one in here. 
custom grind. Um, I'll put up specs of what we went with. Uh, I think off the top, uh, I'm not even going to guess off the top of my head. I had three roller cams made, and it's hard to keep them all straight just off the top of my head. Um, but we are going roller cam. One of the things is that we'll be using, um, we like to use Morel lifters, and they have the link bars, the retrofit Pontiac roller lifter. Due to the short deck height of the 301, the cylinder head, you have to put the lifters in before you put the cylinder head on. It's close, but it won't go in. <clears throat> so we'll be doing that. And then the biggest question that everybody's going to ask is, what are we doing for an intake manifold? We've got a couple ideas. I haven't settled on one yet, but it's looking like it's going to be a modified uh, aftermarket aluminum intake manifold. But this engine is going to be turbocharged. It is going to use the, the standard 301 turbo, draw through turbo. It is going to be fuel injected with a Holley Sniper. It's going to have the upgraded turbo on it. It's going to have the shorty header system uh, with, the, with the headers on it, all that stuff. But we, I don't think we're going to be fabricating an intake from scratch, not yet. Um, I'm really exploring the possibility of a modified uh, aftermarket performance aluminum intake manifold, trying to uh, narrow something up somehow. And we've got a couple ideas. We're talking to, to, our, to our machinists and just seeing what is the most economical way to do it, the easiest way to do it, the, the, the way that makes the most sense. And we have a couple different intake manifolds picked out um, that we want to try, not try, but explore which one we think would uh, give us the best result. So I'll deal, uh, the next video will probably detail that once we make a decision. Um, these heads already came set up with valve springs for the roller camshaft. It will have a roller tip rocker arm on it. We do have to measure for push rod length right now because the push rods with the roller lifters are going to be a different length. Uh, we'll get that sorted out. So yeah, this is this is going to be pretty exciting. Uh, hope you guys enjoy the video. Uh, be sure to do check back in as we continue progress on the build, and we'll go over the details more and any roadblocks we might stumble into and things that we have to uh, fix along the way to make it work. We'll end the video there, and we'll see you next time.